Hello everyone, welcome to Power Query Basic. Today we will talk about adding columns from examples, just like fresh view in Excel. Let's start with a typical example. How to get the first name, last name, and even reverse the order of the first name and last name, and with the comma removed. Let's watch how we can do it. With the data loaded into the Power Query Editor, we select the column, go to Add Column, Column from Examples, from Selection. So in this dialog box, we can check the column that we want to refer to. Because I have only one column, this is checked already. So here in the column one, I can double click on it and then rename it to the column name that I want. For example, I want first name in this example. And then here I can base on any rows, but I would prefer to start with the first row to input the example that I want to get from the column. So in this example, I just want to get the first name. So I input James. Wow. With just one example, Power Query can detect the pattern and give me all the rest of the first name in the dataset. This is super wonderful. Pay attention to the formula suggested by Power Query here. I strongly recommend we review the formula here because this is very critical. I will tell you more why it is critical later in this video. But now everything looks okay. So I just click OK. There we go. We have the column of first name. So easy. How about the last name? Again, select the column here and column. Column from examples from selection. Rename the column one here by double click. I am going to get the last name here. And then I am going to again give example, which is Smith. Wow. You can see that because the pattern is so clear, actually one example is good enough for Power Query to suggest the rest. And it is correct. So pay attention to the formula here. This is what Power Query returns based on this equation or formula. OK, so now I have two columns added. Very basic, very simple. Now I'm going to do something a little bit, just a little bit more complicated. I want to reverse first name and last name and remove the comma. So I'm going to give extra examples for this case. Select the column, add column, column from examples from selections. Indeed, with these two additional columns, I can start with these two columns. This will be easier, but assume I don't have these two columns. I have just the first name column and last name columns, and I want to do so, so I am still referring to this column. Here, let me rename this to last name first name okay we need to provide example the first one will be smith james okay after the first input power query didn't get the pattern yet so no suggestions so far so i'm going to give another example this one is johnson johnson peter enter well power query suggests something but apparently this is not correct. So we can see from the third example, um, something is wrong here. This one is absolutely wrong. When we look at the formula suggested here, uh, uh, somehow it is based on a pattern like getting the, uh, the seven letters uh, from the middle of first name, last name column, and then combined it with a space and then combine it with the first fifth characters, mm, something strange. This is not what we want. No worry, so we can provide more examples. 
I want to correct this one, so I jump to the fourth row here. Let me tell Power Query, oh, for this row, I am expecting Brand Michael. Okay, enter. Wow, by correcting that entry, now Power Query can detect the pattern and provide all the answer that is correct. Wow, this is a quite a overwhelming uh, formula provided by Power Query, and I couldn't see the details. No worry, just click OK. After I insert the steps, I can see the full formula here. Wow! Honestly, this is not a simple formula that everyone can comprehend. But in short, this formula works. And we will prove that it works by adding some additional data set to it. Let me do it. Home, close and load. Okay. I have prepared some new data here. And for demonstration purpose, one of the data doesn't follow the pattern, last name and first name, separated by a comma. The format here is a little bit different because I have the space in the first name. So let's see what happened when I append this new data into my data set, into my table, and then going back to the Power Query editor. So click here, refresh preview. There we go. We can see that, well, for this, it is not correct. For the rest, it's correct. So the question is, is Power Query incorrect? Mm, indeed, no. Indeed, Power Query just did what I told Power Query to do. Remember the step we have for the last name? This is the step we insert the last name. And the formula here actually suggests to get all the tests after the delimiter space. So in this scenario, because we didn't expect there will be a space in the first name. And in this scenario, Power Query separated the test with the first space. So that's why four comma space one is returned because we have this first space here. We can see that even though the column from examples is super great, easy to use. However, we have to make sure that the pattern actually is consistent. If we are going to add some data in the future that is not carrying the consistent pattern, it may not work. Otherwise, the result may be surprising. So this is something we need to pay attention to when we try to do the columns from example. Now, I'm going to show you how to solve the problem we have in the previous video by looking at the pivots of the store ID, determine the store type, and then the channel, and also assign the store grade according to the sales amount. In the previous video, we can do that with adding conditional columns, but can we do it with example? Let's see. Add column, column from examples, from selection. So let's give the example here. This is store type. Starting from F, I want it to be fee standing. Okay. And then the next one, let me give more example, fee standing. Oh, by giving two examples, Paraquia think that I want to simply add a column called Feed standing, which is not the case. So I'm going to give more example. So start with S is shop in shop. Shop in shop. I have to give more example because it will be difficult for Power Query to understand. Oops. And also when giving example, my the spelling because you may misnead Power Query. Let me correct this. While I'm giving example, I want you keep an eye on the suggested formula here. It keeps changing. 
it keep guessing what we are trying to achieve. So let me do again for the O. So o, start with O is O on net. This is also on net. And then I also need to scroll down a little bit to look for the sample starting with P. So this is pop up, pop up. Well, <laughs> I have given examples already, but still Power Query is not able to determine the pattern. So let me try more. Pop up. And this is fee standing. Uh, this is shop in shop. Shop in shop. And this is our net. And this is pop up. Wait, I have given enough examples, I believe. But still, I don't get to expect the result. Let's check what is going on here. Okay, so with these steps, Power Query seems to have to look into the entire store ID, trying to give a pattern. So there's a bunch of conditional columns. If it is equal to a particular shop, then something. If it is equal to another particular shop, it is something, and so on and so forth. This is not a pattern at all. It's just a conditional column based on individual store ID. So what do we do? We need to do it in a smarter way. We need a helper steps. Let me remove the step here. Remove it. Start over by adding a column from the samples. Again, based on this, I want to get the first letter. So in the first row, I input F. See, this is what, this is just the formula, but this is not why I want. So I go to the next one, starting with S, and I provide the second example, S. Wow. We now see that by providing two simple examples here, Power Query able to detect the patterns with this simple formula. As simple as that, we have a helper column called first characters. Okay. Then with this additional column, we can build our next logic column for examples from selection. So this will be our store type. F stands for fee standing. Okay. This is super key. I don't have to repeat this example. What I need to do is go to the second one with S. So S is shop in shop. Enter. Wow. Then go to the one start with O. O is O net. Finally, go to the one start with P. This one. P stands for pop up. Enter. By giving four examples here, Power Query will manage to detect the pattern and return the answer that I need. Okay. And pay attention to the formula returned. This is more or less the same as the formula we did by using the conditional column in the previous video. And if we don't want something load to be displayed, we want others, we can modify the formula easily. Just replace the node with others. In case there is some store ID log starting with the four previous that we specified, then it will return others. Awesome, super easy. So how about adding the store grade according to the sales amount? Let's do it right now. Add column, column from examples, from selection. I want to call it a store grade. And I have to be very strategic in giving uh, example in this case, because my boundary of the store grade is 300 and 700. I will try to look for the boundary. So I will look for a value that is close to 700 here. So above 700 or equal to 700 is grade A. So I type A here. So uh, let me get 
the lower boundary. The lower boundary is 300. Let me see if we have 300. Oh, we have 300 here. So for 300 or above, that will be grade B. Again, pay attention to the formula here. Wow, this is something close, but not really what we want. The formula said if the sales is equal to 730, then A. Else, if it is equal to 300, then B. Else, nothing. No, this is not what I want. I want a range. So I'm going to provide more example. So I want to tell, oh, what if it is below 300? Oh, I have a case here. If 201 and 10, this is grade C. Well, there are one more condition here. But still, this is a very standard condition. So I need to provide more example. Look for the scenario that is under 300. Okay, where we have, so here, under 300, this is gray C. Whew. Right now, I have a formula suggested by power query, which is pretty close to what I want. Let me accept this, okay. By looking at the formula, we know that this is pretty close, but not exactly what we want, because the boundary for the grade 8 should be 700. So this should be super simple. We just go into the formula here, replace the value 730 to 700. Then we have the store grade added based on the condition of the sales amount. This is super awesome. like this video. Bye-bye.